Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Dynasty After Dark. I'm your host, Calvin Timms. Find me over on Twitter at TDC underscore Calvin. Find my co-host on Twitter at Dynasty underscore Dale. We're back with part two of the running back free agents. There's so many of these guys. So yesterday we broke down eight of them. Three of the premier players out there that are going to be hitting the free agency market. And then five guys we think we're going back to their teams. Now we're going to talk about a couple other tiers here. These guys are down a tier from those three elite guys that are going to be moving teams. I don't think they're going to be going back Mm -hmm. to their specific teams. So we're going to talk on them quickly and, you know, give our our thoughts where we kind of take these guys. It's going to be a little bit easier because none of these guys are really first round picks worth of players. So, you know, given a comparison straight up between, you know, these guys and, and, Ramondre Stevenson is kind of pointless, right? So they're all kind mm-hmm. of in the same tier there. So yeah, just a couple thoughts there. Dale, how you doing today? Hey, I'm doing great, man. So how are you? Pretty good. You know, good. still still have a little bit of this cough that just refuses to go away a month later. So mm. that's that's always fun. But you know, it's combine week, so can't complain too much. Hopefully, we'll. I'm excited for next week when we have all the measurables in, and we're going to be able to really. Yep break down these guys, kind of update our rookie ranking. So make sure you guys tune in for that. We'll be updating the quarterbacks, running backs, receivers, and tight ends following that. I'm probably not going to move Bryce Young after not throwing and everything. So he'll still be my quarterback four. He'll be four still, so it's all right. It's fine. It's fine. Um, All right, so you ready to get into these guys? Absolutely. All right, so the number one guy we're going to talk about here is going to be David Montgomery. So Dave Montgomery, free agent from the Bears, and good player. I just don't think that the Bears want to bring him back. They've got Khalil oh. Herbert there, and Khalil Herbert has been very, very good. I don't think they're just going to want to pay someone like Dave Montgomery, and that's kind of the issue there, right? So what are your thoughts on Dave Montgomery? Where do you want to see him land? Uh, I mean, I really do like David Montgomery, but you know, I, I, you know, I, I agree that I agree that the Bears don't want to pay him. Um, I think they've used him quite a bit. Um, I mean, he's going to be twenty twenty six at at the, at the start of the year, so you know, like he's kind of on that edge where you're a little scared to pay him. But you know, I mean, I think it'd be kind of, I, I think it'd be interesting to see him go to like Miami would be very a, a, a very fun spot for him and really suit his skill set you know I I feel I feel he's a very I really feel he's like the quarterback's best friend you know having having those dump offs um Mm -hmm. and stuff like that and I really think Tua needs somebody like that you know instead instead of him having these big drop backs and having to try it try to throw it 40 yards downfield yeah so um, he's a good pass blocker too you know yes he is so so uh so I think him going to Miami would be great I love to see him on the Chargers. Mm, yeah, you know Austin Eckler. They've been looking yeah. for a guy to pair with Austin Eckler. Just go get a good player. Yes, they have. You know, yeah. stop drafting guys yep. and just go get one. But yeah, we'll see where he ultimately ends up. One of the the more interesting rumors that I've heard all off season is is the Minnesota Vikings are more than likely going to cut Dalvin Cook. And then mm. you know we haven't talked about the Buffalo Bills as a landing spot really too much yet. Right, but if. Dalvin Cook gets cut. There's a very real possibility he goes over to the Buffalo Bills, plays with his brother. You got the Cook brothers playing for him. It'd be interesting, you know, (laughs) for Dalvin Cook, but that leaves a pretty massive hole on the Minnesota Vikings. So they're a player that could definitely be in the market. You know, then it's a a rival team, a good team in, in the NFC North. So, Something to just keep on mind for some of these these lesser tier because I don't think the Minnesota Vikings are going to want to pay for Saquon Barkley. Maybe they would. Oh. Maybe they're going to cut Dalvin Cook, trade him to the Bills, whatever it is, and they're going to go after a Josh Jacobs, a Saquon Barkley. But more than likely, I think they're going to get one of these lower tier guys that they can make look better, you know, kind of elevate them a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Dave Montgomery to the Minnesota Vikings would be a, an ad, awesome ad there. So what are we thinking about value wise? You know, I'd probably be leaning high second for him still. I get that there's a little bit of downside on yeah. him, but there's a lot of potential there as well. He's a good runner. Um, 
I feel bad for him because he's been with Chicago the last couple years, and Chicago's just gotten worse and worse and and worse. And he's a capable pass catcher. You know, he's not the he's not the best, but he's not bad Mm -hmm. by any means. And then when you look at the guys in the early second range, you're talking about guys like you know Zach Evans, Sean Tucker, Kendry Miller. Like I'd rather have Kendry Miller over him, but I'd rather have Dave Montgomery over Zach Evans and Sean Tucker for sure. Right. So right. early second is where uh, I'm leaning. Right. Well, I I, th- I think the thing I worry about Montgomery is how much of his production was him being a good player or him being a player of necessity for the bears. That's a good so, question. So, you know, I, I feel that that can really, it, on what side of the coin you lean really skews your value. Sure. Um, I mean, I mean, I like Montgomery. I think he's a pretty decent player, but I, th- I think like a mid second is very fair for him. Um, I probably wouldn't give up an early, I think I would rather have like a Sean Tucker upside, you know, um, you know, like a, Kendra Miller. I would, I mean, you know, I would rather have kind of those guys you know, personally, but yeah. you know, I, I, w- I would feel comfortable like getting him for like, you know, maybe like a two, five, two, six. I think that's about as far as I would want to go for Monty there. Yeah. Yeah. Like you said, he's not a plus athlete. Like he's not one of those no. world beater athletes, which nope. I do understand that. But at the same time, he's not bad either. He- right. So um, he's very solid. Yeah, yeah he's a he, yeah. <laughs> hilariously. He's a he reminds player. me so much of uh, Jordan Howard from the Bears yeah. a couple years ago, yep. right? Yep. So yep. Ba- maybe a little bit better hands for Montgomery than yes. Jordan Howard, but just very, very similar players. And then Jordan Howard left the Bears and had no career anymore. So yeah, it's very, definitely a risk with Dave Montgomery, but I think he's going to go somewhere and be pretty solid. Like you said, I, I don't think he's going to go anywhere. He's not going to go and, and be a game changer for a running back room, but I think he's going to go somewhere and they're going to use him like a James Conner when he went over to Arizona, right? And James Conner's better than Dave Montgomery. He kind of earned his own starter's role for that team, but I just think that Dave Montgomery is going to go somewhere. He'll probably fight for 50, 55% of the the target and, and, and carry share, but... Yeah, that's going to be about the ceiling of his abilities at this mm-hmm. point. So you're you're definitely getting an RB two for that. But with the yep. vast amount of guys that are going to be exiting the NFL over the next couple of years, that could be pretty valuable. So um, that's where I'd be willing to go over a Zach Evans. Mm-hmm. I don't like Zach Evans as much, nearly as much as a lot of the consensus out there. Sean Tucker, I do like him, but it's just too much. There's a lot of risk associated where there Monty's is. much there more is. solid. Right. So that's kind yeah. of the, the difference there. All right. Yeah. So the next guy here is going to be Damien Harris, free agent from the new England Patriots. Good player. Again, the, these guys are all such good players. It's just, mm-hmm. it stinks that they're all free agents at the same time. Right. So what are we thinking on Damien Harris? Uh, I don't really know what to do with him. I mean, I don't, I don't really see a good landing spot for him. You know, you know, I mean, I mean, he's definitely not coming back into England. You know, I, nope. I don't see Bill paying him at all. No, but, you know, it's, 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 it's not going to happen. So, you know, um, I could see him maybe going to, I'm trying to think of some of these running back needy teams, you know, <laughs> you know, you know, I'm, I'm, I could see him going somewhere like the Ravens, you know, the, the Steelers as a backup. I, right. the problem is I just don't know what he wants to be. Right. Be, yeah. Yeah. Like he's, if he wants to be the, the primary guy, I just don't know if there's many opportunities out there, there for him. There's really like the not. saints. There's really not. I could see him going to the saints. Right. Maybe the Cardinals Maybe. to back up James Conner. Right. There, yeah, there's just not a ton of his specific skill set. I just don't see very many needs in, across the league. Mm-hmm. Maybe he goes to Tennessee and he just goes to sit behind uh, Derrick Henry. Right? There's the That's Frable poten- connection from yeah. from yep. uh, New England. You know, New England. all yeah. the New England players just have good connections with Mike Frable. So you could definitely see him going there. Derrick Henry's getting older, so maybe they try and use him to to spell him. Or Jacksonville Jaguars would be a good fit for him as well. You know, kind yeah. of pairing him with 
an ETN who's more of a space type of running back, yep. right? Get him in space and, and let him work where Damian Harris is more of a, a plotter, you know, not, not in a negative mm-hmm. sense. He's a good player, but right. you know, he's just not the, I'm going to bust off a, a million yard runs, right? Like an ETN yep. is. Yep. So yeah, yeah. What are we thinking value wise? Late second. That's probably my limit on him. He's older. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I know, wouldn't give up. Yeah, his he's never had more than two hundred and two carries in a season, so he's fresh. We'll we'll say that, but yeah, I don't know. Right. I I just I, don't love yeah. Damian Harris. I don't I don't either. I'm off him. You know, I I, I mean, I like I mean, I I like some runners with his play style, but yep. he's not he's not one of them. <laughs> sure, I'll be, I'll, I'll be very honest. Like he, he doesn't really excite me that much. You know, I would probably do like an early third maybe and even at that i think i would rather have a rookie see that's where i think that's where the value falls off too much at least from from the the rookie standpoint like we're talking guys like you know rasheed rice rakeem Mm -hmm. jarrett uh, deuce vaughn Tajay Tajay spears Spears might be very good like he's he's rising on boards pretty fast like yeah but a, a chain, whatever Devin a chain. Yeah, a chain. I'd rather yeah. have Damian Harris and those guys because I think that they're gonna they're too risky, right? But fair, fair. I don't know. It, it, that's there is definitely a drop off in in yeah, absolutely. you know this class has so much value. It has so much depth in the mid second. Mm-hmm. You're still getting guys that could in other draft class be first round players, but by the yeah. early third you're seeing a very, very large drop off in terms of talent, right? So it, it definitely feels like it almost goes from, you know, two five, two six to being first round, one twelve picks in other classes to the three mm-hmm. one being like the three six, three eight in other classes. So it's yes, like there's yes. no intermediate type of there's very few intermediate players in this year's draft class. So that's mm-hmm. where I'd be willing to go into a late second for him. I do think that in the third round, the, the value difference there is just too massive. Like I'd rather have him than, you know, Marvin Mims, Parker Washington, Darnell Washington, some of these guys, Xavier Hutchinson. It's about the range that he goes in, right? That's where I'd, I'd be okay with him or one of these guys, depending on team need. If you need a running back, go for him. If you need a receiver, go for some of those guys. But yeah, it's, it, it definitely falls off pretty heavily. But again, if you can get him for a third, I think that's just pretty good value there as well. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah, yeah I, I, I definitely agree. And like, just, just like out, 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 out of the list today, like Harris is probably one of the lower ones I have. Personally. Yeah. Yeah. He's probably, one yeah. Of them, yeah. He's towards the bottom, but this next guy too is, is a little scary as well. So mm-hmm. Devin Singletary, um, free agent from the running, er, from the Buffalo Bills, 25 years old. He's a small guy, though. That, that That's the one thing with he Devin is. Singletary. He's not a plus athlete, and he's smaller. So um, yeah. it, it feels like with Devin Singletary, you were always holding on because he was with the Buffalo Bills, and mm-hmm. they never really replaced him. But I will say, Devin Singletary was very solid. That, that's kind yeah. of his MO. He was, he was solid. He did get vultured a crap load by by Josh Allen on the ground. That that's also a yeah. massive. I mean, you look at Josh Allen the last couple of years, right? Seven touchdowns, six touchdowns, and these are rushing. Eight touchdowns, nine touchdowns, eight touchdowns. That's a lot going to the quarterback position. I think Devin Singletary is going to go somewhere where there's no ru- real rushing threat for the teams, um, but. Again, there's not a t- just like Damian Harris. Where's he going to go? That's mm-hmm. a really good fancy landing spot. I think teams in this upcoming draft are going to pay well for the Barkley, the Jacobs, the Sanders type of players because you can build your yes. offense around them. Where these next tier guys, you know, David Montgomery, I feel like is a little bit of a, a tier break between these these other two, but you're not building your roster around a Singletary and. No. You know, that's the one downside. Is he going to go somewhere like the Rams and compete with Cam Akers? It's not terrible there. You know, mm-hmm. that wouldn't be a terrible landing spot. Maybe he goes to Seattle. Maybe not. I don't know. It, that's just where the kind of, of 
maybe he goes to the Denver Broncos and fills in for Javante while he's still on the mend, yeah. right? So just a couple places that we could see him going, but in all those places he's competing with someone else, right? So yeah. that's the one downside for Devin Singletary. So value wise, what are you thinking for him? Um, I would say I would say maybe a smidge more than Harris. Um okay. because because he does have the catching ability upside. He does. <clears throat> he does. Which, which does help. So I mean, I would you know if I would I would feel good with like a late second. Okay. You know, probably probably between you know like the two oh nine, two ten, probably around there is I feel is a fair value for him. You know, it, especially with him, he's he's probably going to try to do what James Conner did a couple years ago and mm-hmm. kind of and 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 kind of go somewhere where he can compete for a spot. But he's not really the lead guy until somebody gets injured, and then he's the lead guy, and then you're kind of I don't want to say stuck with him, but they have him. Right. So, right. So that's kind of that's kind of where I see him going. So um, I would feel good right there. Probably, I probably wouldn't go any higher than like two seven two eight. That'd probably be about it for me. Yeah, I'd probably say two nine is my peak. Yeah. You know, same as yeah. Damian Harris. Right in that range, later second, yeah. two nine to two twelve. If you can get them for that, yeah. I think that's fine value. If you're selling them yeah. and you can get more than that, move on quickly. You know, so yeah. that's kind of what we're, we're what we're feeling with these guys. Again, there's a definite tear break here, but all these guys have been good for fantasy at points in their career, right? So yes. it's not like they yes. have no value. I know you don't get excited about these guys, but they do still have value and just completely ignoring them. I feel like that's one of the biggest mistakes that people make right now is, you know, they just, Oh, this guy's not a first rounder. So I just don't care. But it's like, you have to win with more than just first rounders. So that's why we're throwing out some of these guys here and what we'd be willing to give up for them because they could help you win a title. You know, they're not sexy names, but they could definitely help you win a title in week 15 when you lose, I don't know, Saquon Barkley and Josh Jacobs. And all of a sudden you're starting Devin Singletary and Damian Harris. And you're like, man. These guys are doing just enough that I'm not losing, right? Mm -hmm. And that's all you need sometimes. And that's what these kind of players are. Devin Singletary, he's not a weak winning type of guy, but he's usually pretty solid. You can plug him in in a pinch and be just fine. He's not going to hurt you. He's just not going to win it for you, right? So, all right, these next two guys. So this one, we talked on him a little bit yesterday. Joe Mixon, I have... Personally, I'd be willing to give up, like Dave Montgomery, a high second for Joe Mixon. Dude is yeah. very good, but the, he's very talented. Very talented. Yeah. You know, this the, this off the field stuff is it's always Worrying. risky, right? Because yes. he's a running back first off, but second off, I mean, Tyree Kill was never going to play another snap in the NFL. Oh look, he's still here. You know. Um, Deshaun Watson was never going to play another snap in the NFL. Oh, look, he's still here. You can dislike what these guys do, and I'm not condoning anything that Joe Mixon has done off the field, but there's teams that look at the talent of Joe Mixon and just say, I don't care, we're, we're going to take him. So, you know, we're going to go get this guy. He finishes RB number 10. It does help when you have a 50-point game in there, but that yeah. just goes to show the talent that this guy does have. Now, he was with the Bengals for many years. It's more than likely he's going to get cut. They save quite a bit of money by moving on from him. I think um, it's a couple, it, it, it's a multi millions of dollars that they save by cutting Joe Mixon. And there's the backlash from the off the field stuff. Similar to Cream mm-hmm. Hunt a couple years ago, you know, there's the video of Cream Hunt kicking a girl in the head, right? Chiefs cut him. He goes and he signs with the, the, the Browns. He was productive for fantasy. So I think that Joe Mixon could have a similar trajectory here, albeit he's a little bit older than Cream Hunt was at the time. But I think he could go somewhere like the Chiefs, and and, and honestly, they would sign him, and he'd be just fine for him, right? So Joe Mixon, if he right. gets cut and he gets signed by another team, he's going to be good for fantasy football. So I'd be willing to give up a, an early second because you do mm-hmm. know that if he signs somewhere, let's say he goes to the Giants as replacement for Saquon Barkley, right? 
well, you know he's going to be worth a first at that point in time. So you're buying him pretty cheap right now because of the off-the-field stuff. But you yep. know that the talent, if there was no off-the-field issues, you're talking in a, a later, you know, mid to later first-round pick. So you're buying him on a discount. I'd be willing to send an early second for Joe Mixon. Thoughts? Yeah, yeah no, I agree with that. Um, I, I honestly wouldn't be shocked if the Raiders pick him up. Like, he just seems like a Raider to me. For whatever reason, maybe I don't but know if they can take I, that negative <laughs> publicity. That's the one I, downside. It, 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 it wouldn't surprise me though. It just, it just, it just wouldn't surprise. It would not surprise me from them. And, so what you're saying is you he's know, a future I, Brown. <laughs> they just don't care about the, <laughs> the off the field. At also all. wouldn't surprise me, but <laughs> yeah. So um, I, I mean, I, I think him going, you know, out out west to the to the Raiders would 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 be a good landing spot. You know, I feel right. it's a very, a, a very similar move, um, and I think he would do well. I mean, I, I agree with you. Um, I mean, I wouldn't go any more than like the two hundred one. I think that's that is the cap for him right now because right. of all this off the field stuff. You there know, is still risk. Get, yeah, I I don't think he'll be on like on the commissioner's exempt list or anything like that because of the whole Alvin Kamara situation. I mean, I, I I know things are a little bit different with how the legal system's going, sure, stuff like that. So, and this kind of is a second strike on Mixon compared to Alvin Kamara's stuff, but still, you know, still, I I I, I would feel good with a, a, you know, and you know, it's giving him up for an early first, early second. Oh, yeah, excuse me. Yes, <laughs> do you not Thank give you. up yes. early first for Joe Mixon? Yeah, do not do that. Absolutely. Thank um, you. But, yeah, so that's what we're thinking about Joe Mixon. There is the very real possibility that he doesn't even get cut, and he's still a Cincinnati Bengals. So if you can yes. buy him for cheap, I think that you're just – Use yep. this off-the-field stuff. Again, you don't, have to, you don't have to like it. You don't have to support it. But people overreact to this stuff every single mm-hmm. time. And it's just – I get it. You don't have to. You don't have to back them morally to draft them for your for your dynasty football team. So, um, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're condoning the action. So, you know, get over your moral high ground here and and just go get a good player, right? right? So, yep. Um, all right, last guy in this tier, Cream Hunt. We just talked about him a little bit. He had the off the field stuff. Cream Hunt was the weirdest player. This last year, you know, I mean, start of the season red hot, then they just stopped using him almost completely. I mean, after he he had 56% of snaps in week one, was averaging right around 50% through the bye week. And then after the bye, he only broke 40 twice, you know, so it's just Mm -hmm. what in the world happened here? I I know that they were getting ready. There was a lot of rumors that they were going to trade him and all this stuff. So cream hunt. It's been a couple years since he's been really fantasy relevant. You know, before, I think it was Kevin Stefanski's first season, he was actually pretty good, but they just have not utilized him the last couple years. How are we feeling about Kareem Hunt, and what would be what would we be willing to give up for him? I don't think he's going back to the Browns. I think he's going to go somewhere no, and be a solid complimentary yes. piece. Yeah, no, I definitely don't think he's going. He's, he's not going to be a Brown again with how they treated him. So, I mean, I, I think it would be fun for him, you know, to go to Miami. I, I, I mean, I, 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 you know, uh, you know, uh, along with, um, you know, uh, uh, along with Montgomery, I feel they have very similar skill sets, mm-hmm. but, you know, I, 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 I feel they're very similar players actually, how, how they run, you know, it's, 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 it's their pass yep. catching style. So, you know, I, I think him down in Miami with, uh, with, you know, Tua and you know Tyreek with all of those track star guys, like I I I think he would fit in quite. I'd so, actually like to see him with Seattle. Seattle, yeah. He seems like a Pete Carroll type of guy too, you know. Yeah, yeah. So that no, that wouldn't yeah, be a terrible because then he's he's no, he's backing up um, Kenneth Walker. You know, at least Kareem Hunt can stay pretty healthy, unlike Rashad Penny. Mm-hmm, we're going to talk about right. here in just one minute, so. You know, it fits there pretty well. So Kareem Hunt, I think the same as the other guys, right? The the same guys in this tier, a late second for him, and I'd be all in. I think that the the pass catching ability that he does have, Kareem Hunt is still mm-hmm. a good player. 
he's getting older. He's getting up there. He's definitely starting to Eddie Lacy his way out of the NFL. It feels like, but for now, I think that he could still be pretty solid. And, you know, for a late second, again, that's kind of where the value of this rookie class really falls off a cliff, especially in super flex. Right. Um, and not in one quarterback, it really it's, it's falls really off, quick. right? Yes. But you know, you're talking in Superflex. There's still some some guys there, but um, you know, everybody gets pushed back because of all the the quarterbacks that go. But mm-hmm. yeah, that's where there's some value in Superflex. So maybe an early third, but I'm I'm going again like two nine to three two. If you can get him in that range, I think that he's yeah. going to help your team. Yeah, no, I would be really happy with that. I mean, I would even go up, you know, two eight. I think two seven's pushing it. I agree. You know, but, I agree. Yeah, I'd rather I, have I some of the guys like Israel, you know, yeah. Abanaconda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, I, th- I think all depending where Hunt goes. I mean, if he goes to a an offensive friendly team, I think that would yeah. bump him up a spot or two. Yep. But 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 it's not going to be that much. Like it's still going to be a like a late a late mid pick. Yep. Yep. I'm with you there. So, um, that's the last guy here in tier number two for us. This is where there's a big drop off here. Now, um, the next guys we're going to talk about. So I already mentioned one of them, Rashad Penny. What could have been, man, the guy, (laughs) he's just the, the perennially injured Rashad Penny got injured yet again. And you know, he's going to be a free agent, Still rehabbing as of three months ago. Um, he, I don't know if he's even going to really come back after this, but what would you know. be willing to give up for Rashad Penny? Dude's so explosive mm-hmm. when he plays on the field. It's I just know, yeah. it's but, wild, man. I've never seen a player that's more polarizing than this guy. You look I at his know. yards per carry over his whole career, it's right? ridiculous. He averages about, about six yards per carry. That's crazy. When he plays, and it's just he never right. he has less than than three hundred carries. Uh, oh may, well, God. maybe less than four hundred. Uh, I'm I'm being but a little. Still, it's like still, man, that's still, that's wild. Through five years, less than five hundred car- or four hundred carries. Crazy. Yeah, right. So, um, for him, I I think if you have a fourth round pick, I I I would throw that out for Penny, but not much more than that. I don't think he has very hardly any value. I, really, I mean, I would like to see him come back and be relevant. You know, I, I do feel bad for him having all these injuries, but he's not worth much at all. all. Right. So, third round pick, would you be willing to give up that for Rashad Penny, or are you not even giving up that? Probably a late third. I think but there's still value it, there. I, I'd be willing to give it, up an early it, third again. The the rookies, I just yeah. don't see much upside and penny we do know right. when he's healthy he's good but that's but big it, if. it's win it's yeah. yeah it's big if big yep. if i mean and and i think i'd rather have another guy on this list over rashad penny so okay so who would you rather, so are you talking about the next guy alexander madison yes yes yep. yes i am so alexander madison i think it's going to get interesting what the vikings do if they do cut dalvin cook and try to save a little bit of money because right. I mean, I mean, they're, I mean, with their cap situation, like they, like they are eventually going to have to pay Justin Jefferson. They yeah. have to. Yep. And they've you got, know, you know, they've got, uh, um, Kirk cousins has been doing all these super short term, fully guaranteed contracts. Yeah, they're either going to have to pay yes. him long term or figure something out or there. Figure something out. Yep. Yeah. So it's going to get interesting, you know, and I, I, you know, I can see them cutting Dalvin cook and then keeping Alexander Madison because when he did play, he was very comp. He, he was very comparable to how Dalvin cook played. Yeah. So, so, you know, I, I, I think that's great. You know, I, I think, I think he can be a fun player. Um, You know, I think him, him staying, I mean, if, if cook stays, Madison's gone. You know, and 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 then vice versa. So, you know, because really, like, who's behind? Um, I, I mean, I mean, like, who's their third string running back? Like, I, th- I think his last name's Ham or something like that. Like, I don't think they have you know, him like, anymore, do they? I no, have it's no Kene, idea. Kene, but... uh, I have no idea how to pronounce this. Naguanwu. Yeah. Sure. 
I mean, he was decent Sounds when he good. did play this last year, but they definitely need another guy. Here's a here. I was just looking this up on Spotrack. So, um, Dalvin Cook has a cap hit of fourteen million dollars this year. Has already come out and said that he's not going to be taking a pay cut whatsoever mm-hmm. um, by any means this upcoming season. But if they cut him, he's only six million debt. So they save eight million bucks by cutting Dalvin yep. Cook. I, and his performance this last year, I just don't see any world where he's on this team come come the fall. Like, there's no way. Right. So, right. There's, a, I think I, I'm with you there. I do believe that they're going to possibly bring back Alexander Madison, maybe even mm-hmm. draft a guy um, yep. in the, in the draft. But you know, what are they? What picks do they have? They have 24, 88. So they have no second round pick. So. It, that's a big investment if they use one of those two picks on a mm-hmm. running back because they've only got five picks total in this in this draft, um, a third, a fourth, two fifths, and then the first. So that's going to be interesting right. to see what happens. Maybe they I cut mean, yeah. and get Jameer Gibbs in the first. That'd be interesting. I I I, do, I, I think they're going to go on the on 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 the defensive side because their defense was trash. So, you know, I, I, I could see them trying to pick somebody up in the third, you know, like maybe like a Tajay Spears would be very yeah. fun. Well, I think Tajay Spears will probably be there in like the fourth, to be honest with you. Yeah, I get that I, a lot I, of I fancy agree. people I are agree. super high on him, but I just don't know. He's small. He is a he is a tiny guy. He's 5'11", 195. So he's a smaller guy. But, you know, you yes. pair that with, with Alexander Madison, you could have some – you'd be cooking with gas there. So, um, yep. all right, so value-wise, what are you thinking for Alexander Madison? Um, I would feel. So there's two questions here. What would you be willing to give up? And what do you think it actually takes to get him? That's the, the problem is I think that his value is so wildly misaligned right now. That's the uh, one reason uh, I had, I'm, I'm down on Alexander Madison. It feels like everybody that has Alexander Madison is trying to get like a mid second for him. And yes. I'd be willing to go, you know, maybe two ten. 212 yeah somewhere in that that's range where I was but thinking. everyone that has him is trying to move him for like the 205 206 and mm-hmm. at that point it's just it's too risky right we've never seen yeah. a sustained workload from alexander madison he has been good in spurts but can he do that over 16 games 17 games can he be the number one guy mm-hmm. we have no idea he's used a lot of his career so far so he's like 24 25 so it's just what do we what can we get for him, right? Right. I mean, I I, I agree with you. Like, if you do like the two ten, you know, you know, like two oh nine would probably be my max on him. Sure. You know, I I, I am ex- I'd like I'm I would I think if he stays uh, in Minnesota, I would be more excited than if he goes somewhere else. Right, and that's where in, the in opinion, so. the downside. The reason why I have him in a in a lower tier than those other guys because we talked about Damian Harris, these other guys being mm-hmm. late seconds, right? They're stable at least, and we've seen it consistently yes. from them. Alexander yeah. Madison has the ceiling to to surpass all those guys. Don't get me mm-hmm. wrong; he has he has the ceiling to be like a David Montgomery type of player, but he just we've never seen it. And you're taking a big leap of faith investing that much on an unknown running back, you know, later on that has that much risk associated with him. So that's the one downside with Alexander Madison, but he definitely has ceiling to surpass all those guys. So um, I do understand that. All right, so the last guy we're going to talk about really quickly here is going to be Boston Scott. He is a free agent. I think this is just a little interesting for me because Miles Sanders is a free agent. Boston Scott's a free agent that leaves mm-hmm. Kenny Gainwell. And then there's all the rumors that they're going to go get Bijan in the, in the upcoming know, draft or Saquon. If you go listen to our breakdown yesterday. So, you know, Boston Scott, I don't think he has much value from a fantasy perspective. I just wanted to touch on him because it does have implications on the rest of the Eagles and, and how that kind of shakes out. Kenny Gainwell is very, very interesting. you know, I kind of yes, use this to, to, whole vault into that even if they get someone like a Bijan or Saquon a two running back system there I don't think that they're ever going to be like a Pittsburgh where one guy gets 95 percent of the snaps right they are um but I think that Kenny Gainwell is very interesting 
I would actually probably go use a late sec- mid-second on Kenny Gainwell. If you need a running back, I think that you could invest in him pretty highly. Boston Scott specifically, since I did bring him up to transition into all these other guys. Um, Boston Scott, I would probably, I mean, I'm not giving. I'm not even giving up a, a fourth. Like I just don't care about Boston Scott. Yeah, there's no real value there. Um, no, but, but there's not. I think that him leaving is just more n- memorable for the the guys that he's leaving behind, right? So yes, yes. I don't think he's going to have much value for fancy, but he's creating value by being a free agent or someone like a Kenny Gainwell or mm-hmm. whoever they do bring in because they whoever. will bring in another guy. Let's say they go Kenny Gainwell and Josh Jacobs. Man, this could be a dominant, dominant it's gonna be scary, game, right? Scary. So yes. um, I don't think that they're going to bring in another guy to be a third guy. I think Boston Scott was just good enough that they kept him around, but – they don't really want to utilize three running backs consistently. Maybe they do. I could be wrong, but I just don't see well, that. Well, I, I, I mean, I don't think three. I, I, I feel if you have three running backs, you don't really have any running backs. You know, in in in, 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 in a way. So yeah. So sort of. you know, I, 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 I do feel two is your sweet spot, and I think he's a. So, I think Scott is a solid. You know, three. He, he, you know, he, he really is. So, yep, I agree. you know, I, I, you know, I think if he goes back to Philly, that that's going to kind of, it's going to have the same role though. So it's not going to, yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. It, it just does cap. Yep. His, yeah. Yeah. It's not going to affect his fantasy value. But I think it more affects, you know, Kenny Gainwell's fantasy value. Yeah. So, couldn't agree more. You know, you know, so that's really where I'm at. And, and, and like what you were saying, like, you know, to trade for him, I would just wait till he gets on your waivers, and if you want to pick him up, you can have Adam. But uh, other than that, I'm not. I don't want to get near him. Yep. All right. So that is 16 running backs. We've now gone over in two episodes here. Let us know your thoughts over on Twitter, on YouTube, in the comments. You know, Spotify. Hit us up anywhere that you're listening to the podcast. Please, if you can, also just leave a thumbs up, a comment, a review like whatever it is for where you're listening it just helps with the podcast helps the podcast get noticed by more people and you can help with that too by going and telling about the podcast to one of your friends like that transition pretty smooth there Uh, i've been working on that in my sleep you know just trying to dream about how to be better at at segues but this is not one of those but uh thank you guys for joining us for these these running backs and these free agents. There's so many good players out there, not at one mm-hmm. receiver, but just across the other positions, there are a lot of guys that have good dynasty implications for them. Um, we're going to be back tomorrow with round two of our mock draft where we're drafting for actual teams in a in a rookie mm-hmm. draft. You know, gives a little bit more context and, and thought process yep. into – how we would approach these picks. And then on Friday, you know, hopefully by then we'll have some combine stuff up, but that we'll be able to start recording some of that stuff. But as of right now, we're still waiting. They did change the Mm -hmm. combine schedule. So I think the running backs aren't until Sunday. So that's going to be rough. We'll probably have to do that one later. You know, we might have to do the other ones first, but um, yeah, it kind of sucks. But uh, yeah. we'll, we'll be back next week with all the combine breakdowns, updated rookie rankings, but on Friday, I'm going to be dropping my fixing the franchise of the Las Vegas Raiders playing GM for this team changes that I would like to see them make. Everybody's talking about them taking a quarterback in the first round. Spoiler alert. I don't think they should. I don't think they can mm-hmm. with the way that this roster is constructed, the way that the contracts are laid out. So I'm going to break that down and talk about the, you know, the fantasy implications, but actually the whole team fixing it. It's not fo- it's not dynasty related specifically, but I'm just trying to talk about football wherever I can, you know, give my thoughts on some of these stuff other than just dynasty. So hopefully you guys tune into it. Let me know your thoughts when you listen to it as well. I like doing some of that side content too, is giving you guys some bonus content that's just not specifically fantasy related. If you guys like it, let me know down in the comments again. Thank you guys again for listening and joining us tonight. Dale, any last thoughts? Nope. All right. Well, we'll see you guys next time. Until then, thanks for listening. Have a good night.